joining me for the study in China lecture. Uh, maybe it's too early, still too early for the kids to think about uh, going to college or to go into China to, um, to have your higher education. Um, but to study in China is not as difficult, it's not as complicated as you think. And also today, my topic is how to study in China on scholarships. I would like to introduce, you can study in China and also you can study in China on scholarships. That is, your parents, your family don't have to pay for your higher education in China. Isn't it a good idea? <laughs> okay. As you know that China is the largest country in the Asia, so it's not difficult to understand that China attracts the largest number of international students in Asia. And China has become the number one destination for Asian students to study abroad. And here is a number that we can take a look. In 2016, the number of international students coming to study in China was over 440,000. They were from almost the world, uh, all over the world, 205 countries, received by 829 universities and institutions in China. This is a huge number of students. And um, what are students in China studying for? Not as what we think that most students, in international students study in China for language training. As we can see from this pie chart, about half, about half students, half of the international students, they study in China for language trainings. And another half, the students, international students, study in China for degrees. And the trend is more and more international students are coming to China for degrees. You may wonder how many of these international students can uh, obtain scholarships? can solve the problem of their um, money, their finance. Actually, 11 for 2016, 11% of the total number of international students that come to study in China on scholarships, on different categories of different varieties of scholarships. And uh, the exact number of international students on scholarships in 2016 were Four, 449,022 students. And this number increased by 111% from, uh, from 2006. And here I would like to introduce three categories of scholarships that students, for international students to apply, um, and also for Trinidadian students. The first category of scholarship is the most important that uh, receive the most uh, students is the Chinese government scholarship. Chinese government scholarship supports a wide range of programs from 279 Chinese universities. That means um, no matter what you want to learn in China, you could find a program from the 279 universities, and you will be able to do your programs on scholarships. And these 279 Chinese universities are top ones, are top universities in China. They offer government scholarships. And for you to, if you would like to apply for government scholarship, Chinese government scholarship, and if you are a UE student, I would like you to pay attention to the UWE uh, and China Agriculture University Exchange Program because UWE and CAU, my home university, there is close collaboration between the two universities and UWE students have a kind of advantage to apply for programs to study at CAU on scholarships, either English taught programs or Chinese taught programs. Um, now, um, some UE students are studying at CAU uh, for agriculture sciences. And also before we had students who have already graduated from CAU who did uh, regional development studies at CAU, China Agriculture University, which is an English program. And uh, also I would like you to pay attention if you would like to 
apply for Chinese government scholarships. Not all programs are Chinese taught. You could also get your scholarship for English taught programs and more and more Chinese universities. Uh, and there are more and more scholarships are available for students who are English speaking. So you should pay attention to the English taught programs if you want to study in China, because no language, Chinese language proficiency is required if you want to apply for this kind of program. Um, to get the information about Chinese government scholarships, you should visit the website of China Government, Counc uh, China, uh, government Scholarship Council. Here is the website that I, I would like to show you. This is the website of China Scholarship Council. And if you visit the section of study in China, here is the online application is right here on the top. And also for some questions, you can get some information in this part, FAQs. And this, this side is very important. You get all the programs in the sections of universities and uni international programs. Here I would like to give you an example. For example, if you search for China Agriculture University, my home university, you will get information like, yeah, this is China Agriculture University. Here you can see that uh, there are two signs 211 and um, two, uh, two buttons, 211 and 985. That means China Agriculture University is a member of Project 211 and also a member of Project 985. Uh, if you have the brochure of study in China, you will know what um, Project 211 and what Project 985 refer to. Uh, nine, for Project 985, there are only 39 universities are members of Project 985. This is the Chinese equivalent to the Ivy League <laughs> in, in the United States. So if a university is a member of Project 985, that is one of the 39 top ones, top universities in China. So CAU is both a member of Project 211 and 985. Okay, we can take a closer look at the projects, uh, programs. Here is the programs of CAU. Bachelor's 45 bachelor's program and a lot of master's 65 master's programs and also doctor programs. And for programs with a Red Star, the Red Star programs are all programs that receive Chinese government scholarship recipients. So if you are on Chinese government scholarships, you can choose from this Red Start programs. Almost all. Almost all. And particularly, um, there are more scholarship programs at postgraduate levels. Okay. The second category of uh, scholarship that I would like to introduce is Confucius Institute scholarships. As you know that we are a branch of Confucius Institute at UE St. Augustine, and what is our job? We teach language and culture. So if you want to learn Chinese language, and if you want to learn more about Chinese culture, you can apply for CI scholarships to study Chinese language and Chinese culture in China through CI scholarships. And CI scholarships, um, the scholarships are awarded to programs, very short programs, four week study programs, all the way to master's program of teaching Chinese as a foreign language. So for different programs, there are different language requirements. Um, we can take a look at the website of Ch Confucius Institute Scholarships. This is the website of CI Scholarships. Here, you can get all the information about um, application guide, click and download. 
you can download the information. And also all the information of host institutions and also recommending institutions. Um, we are the recommending institution of students in Trinidad and Tobago who would like to apply for Confucius Institute scholarships. That is, we recommend students, we provide recommendations for students who would like to apply for CI scholarships. Um, if you're interested, just register and you could go uh, get into the application online. So CI scholarships is for people who are interested in learning the language in an intensive, um, in an intensive way, and also the Chinese culture. And also, for example, uh, for programs about Chinese medicine, Chinese history, Chinese literature, the, you can also take a look at the programs under CI scholarships. The third category of uh, scholarship I would like to introduce is particularly for students in Trinidad and Tobago. This is called Dai Ailian Foundation. It is for st students who would like to learn Chinese folk dance in Beijing because Dai Ailian Foundation was created to honor Dai Ailian who is considered mother of Chinese modern dance. She was born in Trinidad. She, is a Trini she was a Trinidadian Chinese. And she is considered as mother of Chinese modern dance. She used to teach at Beijing Dance Academy, and she was the first director of Beijing Dance Academy. So this is the three categories of scholarships that I would like to introduce. If you would like to um, continue your study, for example, if you would like to, to do biology, to do IT, um, any program you're interested in, you may consider Chinese government scholarships. If you want to do Chinese language, to, to learn Chinese language, or to do Chinese history, philosophy, literature, you would like to check out the information about CI scholarships, Confucius Institute scholarships. And if you would like to learn Chinese folk dance, uh, visit Dai Ailian uh, Foundation. And they also have their website. Here is um, application information on Dai Ailian Foundation as well. 2017 scholarship application form. And you may wonder, how about the language? <laughs> is language required or how to prepare for the language? Generally, it is required if you want to study in China. Uh, the language proficiency test you're supposed to do is called HSK. HSK is, stands for Han Yu Shui Ping Kao Shi, which is translated as Chinese proficiency test. Um, HSK test is organized by Confucius Institute headquarters, and we are a Confucius Institute branch in Trinidad and Tobago, so we are also a test center, official test center of HSK. So you can take your HSK test here with us at UWE. Um, and this is an international standardized exam that tests uh, and rates the Chinese language proficiency. Um, so it approximates the English TOEFL IELTS. For me, non-English speaker, um, if I want to study a program in an English-speaking country, for example, if I want to study in the United States, I'm supposed to do TOEFL. And if, you, if I want to go to Australia or UK uh, for, to further my study, I would definitely do IELTS. So HSK is the language test for applicants to apply for uh, academic programs in China. Uh, and if we use the HSK certificates for academic purposes, if you want to apply uh, an academic program, make sure that your HSK certificate, you must um, make it valid for, uh, that is, you did the test um, within the past two years because it is only valid for two years for academic purposes. This is the website of 
HSK test. You could visit the website to see, to know more about the test. How many levels? Six levels. Uh, level one is the lowest, and level six is the highest. HSK is actually a written task con uh, consisting of listening, reading, and writing. And speaking is a separate part, which is called HSKK. So if you uh, would like to apply for academic program, and you are supposed to do both HSK and HSKK, both the written and the speaking. And you may wonder, what is the language requirements for, 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 the, for, the, for the programs, for the academic programs in China? Uh, generally, for undergraduate students, now um, no English taught program is available uh, for undergraduate students. Undergraduate students are supposed to register for Chinese uh, taught programs, and that means if you're undergraduate students doing academic programs in China, you're supposed to prepare uh, your language. That is, applicants are supposed to pass HSK level four. And for postgraduate students, they can choose either to do Chinese taught programs or English taught programs. And generally, the requirements, the language requirement for English taught program um, both undergraduate and uh, postgraduate is HSK level four, but it's not absolute. If you're doing Chinese literature, if you're doing history, and you're supposed to reach level five. But for, the, for general programs, level four is, is the requirement. And the good thing is, if you would like to apply for English taught programs, no language proficiency is required. But I would like to say that if you learn a little bit of the language, that will be very helpful. That, that is a plus for you to apply for an English taught program. Um, three years ago, one, uh, my students, uh, one of my students joined my Chinese class in the South, in San Fernando. He did three sessions, three semesters with us. That is 150 hours, about that. And then he passed HSK level two here in Trinidad. But you know that level two is not sufficient to apply for Chinese taught programs. So he applied for an English taught program with CAU. His, um, his major was um, regional development studies. He did two years in China. He went to China 2015, and this year he graduated. He got his master's degree. He got a certificate of teaching English as a foreign language while he was studying in China. And he got his HSK level four certificate, and he got his job. <laughs> now he has become a teacher at Beijing Foreign Studies University. He has become an English teacher at the university. So um, when he was um, applying for the program and when he went to China, he was one of the two or three students in the class who were able to communicate a little bit in Chinese. And that was a plus, that was an advantage for him. And also because with the language, you will, he would be able to enjoy the life in China. And we have talked about the scholarships and HSK, uh, the language proficiency test. So here is a map for us to better understand the relationship between um, the language test and the scholarships. Um, always we say that we suggest students to start by uh, learning Chinese language class, uh, by learning Chinese language with us. You can start by taking CI language and culture courses. And um, if you will go to college in a few years, you could prepare gradually and do your HSK test in Trinidad before moving to China. You could have everything prepared. That will save you time and money right here with us in terms of the language at, at CI. Uh, 
And if you're just interested, like for example, to go to China to study the language for a period of time intensively, you could think about CI scholarships because the shortest program, intensive language program uh, supported by CI scholarship is only four weeks. There is four week program and also there are one semester, one year programs. Four week, one semester, one year. This Three intensive language programs are very helpful for people to learn the language, to, to develop their language proficiency. Because while you are learning in China, you'll be learning much faster. And also, CI scholarship supports students who would like to do bachelor's and master's degree of teaching Chinese as a foreign language. If you want to be a Chinese teacher in the future in Trinidad and Tobago, you could think about that. Not necessarily you must do CI scholarship. You must go to China to learn language. If you have your language prepared, you could, you could directly apply for the Chinese government scholarship, uh, apply for any Chinese taught programs you are interested in. Uh, and of course, now it is good because pe people and students have more choices they could join English taught programs on Chinese government scholarship as well. But as, as always, we suggest people prepare and learn the language a little bit before going to China for Chinese taught or English taught programs. Then how can CI can help you with your application? Our job is to teach language. Our job is to teach language and, and culture, and also we have uh, different roles. Uh, this CI, CI at UW St. Augustine, our CI, is the recommending institution for CI scholarships in Trinidad and Tobago. If you would like to apply for CI scholarships, come to us, let us know, and uh, do your HSK, and then we will be able to recommend uh, for, recommend you to do the Chinese study in China on China's uh, CI scholarships. And this CI is the bridge between CAU, my home university, and UE San Augustine. So CI at UE San Augustine administers CAU UN student exchange programs supported by Chinese government scholarships at postgraduate level. All UE students who are sent to study at CAU, they are either master students or PhD students. They are doing their research at CAU. Of course, CI offers Chinese language and culture courses at low, all levels, from beginner level all the way up to the advanced levels. And of course, you can do HSK with us. Um, we are the test center. Generally, we organize HSK tests once a year, but sometimes twice a year, depending on how many people would like to do the test. And we have all levels, and HSK, KK as well, the speaking, the speaking test as well. For us, non-English speakers, if um, we want to study abroad, we have to do English. And it's a, it's a long process. It's a lot of hard work, but it pays off. It's rewarding to learn the language. OK, so if you have more uh, questions and if you're interested, we can meet at the booth for inf more information. Thank you very much. Uh, in the end, I would also recommend you watch a video on YouTube. This is a study in China video produced uh, specifically particularly for students in Trinidad and Tobago about how to apply for programs in China and how to apply for scholarships from China. It has all the information I just talked about. The, the website, the different categories of scholarships, and how to prepare for your HS, HSK test. All information in the eight minute long video. So I would like you um, to watch this video to get more information. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining me. Thank you.
The Confucius Institute at the UE St. Augustine campus is an educational institution for Mandarin Chinese language teaching and the promotion of Chinese culture. In this video, we would like to introduce you to the many opportunities to pursue your academic dreams in China. Confucius Institute Scholarships Students of the Confucius Institute can apply for scholarships to pursue short-term study during the July-August or December-January periods. Or students can pursue long-term study in China for a period exceeding one year. What can you study in China? The list is endless. You can learn about traditional Chinese medicine, music, language, literature, philosophy, history, management, and even dance. CI scholarships provide full coverage on tuition fees, accommodation fees, allowances, and medical insurance expenses if your term of study falls within specific criteria. CI scholarships are exclusively available to registered students at the Confucius Institute. So hurry up and sign up for one of our classes. Chinese Government Scholarships Not a CI student? Don't worry. You can also apply for full and partial scholarships offered by the Chinese government through the Embassy of the People's Republic of China to Trinidad and Tobago. By way of this scholarship program, international students can study many disciplines at one of more than 200 Chinese universities on the program's official list of universities. Similar to the CI scholarships, full government scholarships cover tuition, accommodation, and allowances. Students who wish to pursue programs taught in Chinese must take mandatory classes and pass the HSK exams. The HSK test is a standardized Mandarin Chinese proficiency exam designed to test a student's progress in the language. The CI at the UE St. Augustine is an official testing center for the HSK exams. So you can save yourself some time by enrolling in one of our classes and then taking the HSK exam before going to China to study. What are the benefits of studying abroad? Whether it's short-term or long-term studies, spending time in another country for educational purposes is an enriching experience. We understand that being on your own in a different environment may become overwhelming at times as you are away from your family and your friends. But look on the bright side. Studying abroad brings about tremendous personal development. You get the opportunity to experience and appreciate a completely new lifestyle. Try new things. Learn about a new culture. Familiarize yourself with a new education system. Learn a new language and navigate a new social environment. And don't forget 
you'll be creating unforgettable memories with new friends along the way. Testimonials Many local Mandarin Chinese students have traveled to China to pursue short-term and long-term studies. This is Kamidra. She spent two years at the China Agriculture University on a postgraduate scholarship from the Chinese government to pursue studies in agronomy. Meet the dynamic duo Zephon and Rondell. They spent one year in the Wuhan district of Hubei province, China on a one-year Chinese language scholarship. Meet Chinin. She spent time in Beijing, Hunan, and Hubei provinces on an intensive Chinese culture program. This is Aaron. He is currently on a five-year undergraduate scholarship from the Chinese government to study linguistics in Hubei province. Now, let us hear from Mark, who is about to complete his master's degree at the China Agriculture University in Beijing, China. You know, my, my Chen Laoshi from uh, Fujian Institute, three years ago I met her and I decided to take you know, Chinese classes uh, part-time, just two days a week, and this is a hobby, you know, and I came to China, maybe with HSK too, and I was surprised at the amount of things that I, I, I was able to do, like, I knew how to buy things, I knew how to shop for things, I knew how to basically live, you know. Um, so I, I think I think Confucius Institute and even learning some Chinese, basic Chinese, can help really well. As you can see, many people go to China to study various fields according to their personal preferences and life goals. Conclusion Leaving your home in most cases for the first time may seem a bit scary at first. But don't worry, we have your back. Studying abroad is an experience unlike any other, and we're here to walk you through the process. To learn more about the opportunities to study in China, please see the following contact information.